So I'm almost done installing my air system in the shop. I'm using the Maxline Rapid Air kit. Is it Maxline Rapid Air? So I'm almost done installing my air system here in the shop. I'm using the three quarter inch Max Air Rapid Line, and I've got a loop that runs all the way around the inside of the shop. And I've got drops on the other side of the shop with disconnects and manifolds, but I don't have them on this side. So to finish up this loop and get air to the machines that I need it to, I need to tie into my line and install those manifolds. So let's do that real quick. I'll show you some of the stuff that I'm using to make that happen. So I've shown this kit before, but I know people will ask people that did not see the original installation. It's a max line kit and it comes with the majority of stuff that you need to outfit the shop. Uh, I found this really, really easy to work with. So here's the two manifolds that we're going to be installing. I've already installed all the fittings, the water drain, the quick disconnect, and then the fitting that connects to the tubing. And this is three quarter inch line. You can buy this kit in half inch line as well. But three quarters what we got and then the clips that hold the tubing to the wall along with some of the tools that I'll be using to get all this hooked up. So I want to run a line down right beside this cabinet. So I'll have a manifold back here. I'll have a clip on the cabinet to where I can grab the air hose and uh, use it right here at the lathe. So I've got a plumb bob. That way I know where to cut this line at. I want it close, but not so close that it uh, is crooked or rubs on the cabinet. You want to hold down that end, and I'll unroll. Yeah, you don't want to roll, unroll any more than what we need. Fifty-one inches. And grab that tape measure. It shouldn't. Just go ahead and push that all the way down to the ground. I'll hold that tape measure on the end. So this just deburs that inside lip because the fittings have O-rings and if it's got a sharp corner it's li likely to push those O-rings out of their seat and also forces it back round because when you cut it it does smash it just a little but just puts it back into shape makes a nice smooth edge on the inside. So I decided to pause on this part of the installation until I get some of the leaks and stuff fixed on the compressor. I still gotta work out all the valves and stuff that I have leaking on it. So we'll pause on that and we'll come back to this after we get those fixed. So a couple leaks at the bottom of the tank. Both the automatic tank drain has a really small leak. And then uh, it has just a manual drain valve here beside of it uh, that has a pretty big leak. So air comes in the building here, the compressor is just on the other side of the wall here. It comes through this line, which I don't like the way that I've done that. I considered putting a rubber whip in between the compressor and the inlet here just because of the compressor vibration and stuff like that to kind of isolate that. I just don't think it's necessary. What is necessary though is a bigger hole than what I got there. Bigger hole and some covers to cover that up, maybe some padding around this tube so it doesn't rub a hole in it. I also 
installed my pressure regulator backwards. It has a flow path or flow direction and I've got it going towards the compressor. So I've got to turn that around and make that hole bigger. So I got the compressed air outlet valve in the vise here and the handle's kind of loose on it. It's leaking from the stem. So I'm going to see, yeah, just finger tight, if I can tighten the stem packing and stop this from leaking from inside the valve out underneath the handle. So I'm just going to, yeah, it's loose. I'm just going to snug that up a bit. Make sure I don't have it too tight. Hmm. That's probably okay. And then put the handle back on it. Clean out the threads. Clean the threads on the uh, fitting on the compressor and put it all back together. And hopefully then we'll fix those two leaks. So these CPVC spacers that I made, they're not spacers, they're actually just hole covers because I had to make the hole through this wall oversized so the airline that runs from the tank to the loop inside the shop didn't rub on these blocks and eventually get a hole in it. And what I did, because the hole was oversized, I didn't want bugs and stuff to come through and I didn't want them spacers to work their way off the wall. Spacers, they're covers. Work their way off the wall. I just pulled that cover back filled that void because the center blocks are hollow with some spray foam which I love and hate and then uh, press those uh, CPPC covers against the wall it dried and worked excellent if I do say so myself so drain valves on tanks almost always leak because all the rust and stuff falls down you see all the stuff falling out of there falls down and gets in the seat of the valve and that causes them to, uh, to not seal good. So I'll pull this apart and clean up this uh, whole unit here.
So let's see how my first attempt to fix all the leaks did. So the solenoid valve still leaks through, but it's not a huge leak. And I guess at night you could just turn that off and it would be perfectly fine. This little finger valve, which is just a manual drain, I don't even know why that's even here with this. But uh, it's it leaks as well, but with a little bit of extra tightening, a little tighter than you can get it with your fingers, with the channel locks, it, it stops. It's just years, years of chewing rust has damaged the seats in these. It is what it is. It, I did fix the valve that goes out of the tank and into the building though, so that no longer leaks. But I want to wire this up to where it does it automatically, or where it gets its power automatically. So I decided to tap into the drains here, both the manual and the automatic, with a couple fittings hooked to some quarter-inch copper tubing run off the edge of the concrete pad here. That way when this thing drains, it doesn't, doesn't drain that old rusty water right on the concrete pad and stain it, because otherwise that's what would happen. This will hopefully work. We'll see how well it holds up. I know it'll clog eventually, but I think it's a better alternative than just running it out under the compressor. So we'll see how well that works. Looks good. So here's the coil tube that I'm going to be using. It's just a flex coil. I think it's made by Freeland Wade. Quarter and PT the connections on the end. Quick disconnect to this Capri Tools blower, which I love these things. There's not much safety involved. They blow extremely hard. So this will just, good thing about these Flexzilla fittings is that you just push them in and that's it. So there's my hook. Not the best hook, but it's all I got at the moment. We'll maybe raise it up a hair, but get the idea. And we have air at the lathe. Oh gosh, that hurts so bad. Oh. This stuff is so hard to get straight. It depends on how picky you are. I'm pretty picky. Um, but it's coiled in the box. So it kind of wants to go back to coiled. 
so. That's pretty good. So here's the manifold that we're going to use here. Um, kind of a Swiss Army fitting. Yep, got the good squeak out of that one, so should be good. So all these manifolds are getting connected to the wall pretty heavy. Each one's getting four inch by quarter inch Tapcon anchors. That way, you know, you can hook an air hose to them. To them. You can pull on them pretty hard and you're not at risk pulling the manifold off the wall because even though they're ran to individual machines each air connection that don't mean they won't get used generally you know for who knows what in the future so got to make sure these are connected good and secure there we go so after hours of digging around in the attic out back and five gallon buckets under tarps. I finally found all the fittings that I need to, so this will do what I want it to do. So we've got airline coming in to our line pressure fitting. We want to blow something off. And then we come out of the little drain valve that's usually on the bottom of these where you drain the water into a fitting, into a T. And now this is my water drain valve. We just got a little catch down here to hopefully catch any water. Then. <laughs> off the T to a small pressure regulator and a quick disconnect fitting that will go to this, which is the air system on my bandsaw to blow the chips away. If you're cutting to a line and you want to be able to see those that line and it not be covered in chips, this has a system that I'll show you, which is really cool. But let's check this first, see if it leaks. I'm just gonna use soapy water and uh, Hopefully this pressure regulator works as well. So we have line pressure to here, and this is good. I've checked it. So pressurize this. That was uneventful. And uh, wind up this pressure regulator to 35, 40 PSI. So I don't want line pressure, obviously, going to this saw. It really was not designed for that. So let's go there. And we'll try that, see how that works. So on the front of this saw, there's two fittings, one for coolant and one for air, which I know that's open because I blew air through it with, you know, just messing around, cleaning out the system, but I've never actually uh, had compressed air hooked up to it. So there we go. Let's check and see if this thing works. It should. It's got a little needle valve that we rebuilt. So this is coolant and air. Uh, that's good. Now we need to plumb that down to here. And although we don't want a lot of pressure, we want velocity. So we'll probably go from quarter inch to eighth inch. That's my thoughts anyway. Just a small eighth inch line. Speed that air up and blow those chips away. Also got this. Better turn this off. So now, got a blower nozzle at the machine as well. Put a hook over here or something. That's nice.
So we're ready for a test. I think that's going to work pretty good. I don't see how it couldn't actually. So we just reduced that quarter inch line down to eighth to speed up that air a bit. Give us a little more velocity. Got a line on this piece of wood because it's really one of the worst in my opinion. If you're trying to cut to a line for chips building up on the uh, on the part and you can't see where you're going. So we'll do a little bit before and after. Show you how bad it is without the air and then we'll turn it on. See how well it works. That's not good. Turn on the air. I would call that a success. And then we got this as well. So putting air on this machine is nice. Very nice. So the tests on this went pretty well. You know, if you want to use coolant, just move it out of the way. Move the coolant over. This stuff really doesn't get in the way you don't work up there so I like it not most beautiful but it is very functional so finally my air system in the shop is done and it's everything that I thought that it would be it's it's a nice system you know, and I'm not affiliated with this uh, airline at all but uh, I would highly recommend this stuff to anybody who's interested in putting their air putting air in their shop tubing Aluminum line, they've been using this stuff, I believe, in HVAC for a long time. So it's good stuff. Fittings, well designed and not prone to leaking. You can buy individual components if you want to and customize your system you know, whichever way you choose. I did end up putting an extra drop down here at the, uh, at the welding table. I thought that was appropriate. I found a manifold that I didn't know that I had. So I'm out of components right now, but I probably will put a drop down at the door to a hose reel. That way I can spool airline outside if I choose. So welding bench, uh, the uh, vertical bandsaw, we have air at the lathe, I have air at the drill press, and I also have the air down at the dual milling machine, and I have some updates on that for anybody who's interested. The parts that I sent off to be ground are complete, and all of that I've got to do is get them back here, and then we'll be back on that project. It'll be a great winter project, I think. I'm excited to get that thing, you know, back together. It's been a while. So as far as the air system, I am checking that off the list for now, at least the loop itself. I do need to work on the components as far as the electrical system for the compressor, get those safety issues that I've got sorted out, and then it will be done. Get the oil changed done as well. So I think that's it. So look forward to next week. We'll probably be working on my old Chevy pickup. <laughs> Uh, my tempers went down a bit since then, so I guess we can start on that. That way I can get some wood in the shop and uh, get ready for winter because we're getting some cold mornings and it won't be long. Snow will be flying and I don't want to work in here in the cold. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, and anybody who's helped me get here. Much appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own. Waiting. Through.